This segment is brought to you by Sumall. Chain, 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 chain in the proxy chain. Really? Is that how it goes? That's that's how you exact, chain proxies. That's how you chain right? proxies. Yeah. yeah, but you got to do it right into the microphone. Oh, just, of course. Yeah. Right, that completely makes sense. And then you get some text-to-speech to your terminal. <laughs> oh my god, could you imagine a text-to-speech <laughs> or a speech-to-text directly into your terminal and then run that as root? <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't have a system. Actually, you would end up like me recently. My Breaking every machine that you yeah, have. Yeah, dang it, my Ubuntu 10.04 <laughs> just like died a horrible death and now I'm, now I'm back to backtrack. So that's fine, because yeah, backtrack's need, good. I it's need just to reinstall Ubuntu and my Windows 7 on my laptop because the dual booting thing is not working out so well with the newest Ubuntu. I'm not the biggest fan of running as root constantly anymore. Really? Like, yeah, it's, it's driving me a little crazy. I keep pseudoing when I don't need to. And anyway, <laughs> I, I like having that, whatever. This isn't my, uh, this will work for right now. So if it like shows up and I don't have a key fingerprint, it's because I didn't have a chance to back up my known host file. Oh, no. So that might be something you want to put in a TrueCrypt volume and throw up on your Google Drive or whatever the hell you, hell you use. <laughs> so. All right. Well, this isn't NerdVent. This is uh, yeah. proxy chain. Proxy chaining. Okay. So here's the thing. We talked about how with SSH tunnels or with with SSH, we can get to remote resources. Like say I've got an IRC server running on this port. Yeah. I can do a port forward, right? So that my machine mm -hmm. on localhost port 8001 is actually through that tunnel to that service over there, the IRC channel, whatever. Okay. And we can do the reverse of that. And so we've talked about forward and uh, remote and mm -hmm. those different types of SSH connections. Well, and then we've also shown how you can use your browser with like a SOX5 proxy, you know, that TAC capital D option. Right, yeah. And we abuse that port 8080 where we're like, hey, Chrome, <laughs> hey, Firefox, <laughs> use port 8080 on my local machine, and then it goes through the tunnel, right? Yes. But that requires that your application either be port specific or your uh, application be SOX5 aware. So is this not port specific? Well, the beautiful thing is we're going to be using proxy chains for me, I'm using it in a configuration so that I'm bouncing off multiple servers. Mm -hmm. However, inherently what it does, in addition to just you know chaining up these proxies, is that it allows you to take a tool that wasn't previously SOX5 aware right. and turn it into one. And so what Proxy Chains does is it's a tool that forces any TCP connection for a given application to go through our proxy of choice, whether that be SOX4, SOX5, or HTTP slash HTTPS. It's really great for, say, you know, if we were using the Onion router mm -hmm. locally, or if we wanted to, if we created a pivot through somebody's network that we had hacked and we want to do an Nmap scan from our local Nmap oh, and not have to drop okay. some tools on those boxes, it's really nice in that, you know, we can put together these chains really easily and take these applications yeah. that weren't SOX5 aware uh, and, and make them go through these. Oh, cool. There are some other tools to do similar stuff. There's, a, I think it's called TSOX is one that allows you to do this. I like uh, proxy chains just because uh, it's really simple, it's cross-platform, and, you know, you'll see. Let's, let's go ahead and get it set up. So as you can see, I am root at BT right now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to create my first uh, SSH session. I'm going to SSH TACD on port 8001. Okay. And I'm going to go ardwolf at avocado.hack5.org. Avocado, of well, course. Yeah, you know, the papayas and the avocados and the mangoes and right. the pineapples. Totally makes sense. Yeah. And I don't have my uh, public private keys set up because I didn't back up those, my authorized keys file either. Uh, so I'm okay. back to square one with all my servers. Ah, but thankfully, okay. I didn't disable password based authentication. I disabled Or else you would be screwed. Root login, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Or else that would have a lot of fun with Virtuoso or whatever it is <laughs> to get things fixed. So I'm Ardwolf at my avocado now. So within avocado, what I want to do is now SSH. TACD, and this time I'm going to use 8002. I'm just going to use a, a increment the port number so that I can keep track of these. Okay. Um, to ardwolf at papaya.hack5.org. So this is going to be the second SSH mm -hmm. to the second server. So our first server is now connecting to our second server. And so we already have okay. a chain of, of three different, you know, I've gone from. Yeah. Um, I've gone from avocado to papaya, and now from papaya, I want to create another SSH session. I'm going to SSH, Jeez. again, capital D, 
I'm going to call it 8003 for the port number, and let's go to Ardwolf at mango.hack5.org. Okay? Okay. And again, it doesn't really matter what port number you're using. No, as long as you can keep track of those. Yeah. And, and as we know, you know, we've talked about some of the SSH options. TACD, that's a useful one, uh, the, the capital one. That's what's creating our, our uh, SOX proxy. Mm -hmm. We've gone into that exhaustively. Yeah. We're using those different port numbers. Uh, TACF is, uh, is one that you might want to try when you're setting up. If you wanted to like script this to be all sexy, you might want to use TAC lowercase f. It makes the session a background process, oh. which is pretty cool. Uh, and then with a TAC capital N, you can say, hey, don't execute anything on the remote server. Okay. Or with TAC lowercase o proxy command, you can send your proxy command. So you can imagine setting up a uh, script that would SSH to the server, make it a dynamic SOX5 proxy as a remote background process, and with a TAC o proxy command option, tell that one, to create the next proxy, same with ah, that, lather, rinse, repeat, and nice. now, yeah, it's just, just a little way to automate this if mm -hmm. this is what you're trying to do, create like a chain of multiple SSH sessions. Right. Uh, if you do that though, um, of course, you're gonna wanna do like, like I'm doing on, um, here, I'll pull up my local machine, I'll do PS AUX. I like to do TAC calls 80, so it doesn't get all ucky. Um, pipe that to grep and look for SSH and put the S in brackets and then that TAC capital D, close our quotes. And so what that's going to do is say that uh, GNU is unknown wrong option. Because it didn't like my calls. Yeah, didn't like my calls. Ah, okay. I think it might have been one dash. Anyway, uh, so without my column formatting, you can see here that I was able to find SSH, tac D, I now have the process ID of this. And so if it was running in the background, I could do a kill 2431 or whatever it may be. Oh. Um, and so that's just to let you know if you're interested in scripting this, because now that I've set this up, I'm going to go back and script this for my own personal uses. Because I like the idea of bouncing my traffic all around. Yeah, especially if that you could have, be useful. Well, it's useful in, if you can imagine if you had multiple providers in different countries, each mm -hmm. country having its own jurisdictions and yes. laws and things get really exciting. And that's why we need to get Chris from DoD.net on here to talk to us Ooh, that about that kind of stuff. Yes. Um, moreover, uh, you know, and we've never, we've talked about PS aux, but we never really uh, digested mm -hmm. that. And so uh, it's not aux, it's AUX. A is for all processes in the terminal, including those of other users. U uh, adds the column um, for controlling users of each process. Mm -hmm. So whose process is this? And then X lists all processes that don't have a controlling terminal or a controlling user. Okay. And that's like if you ever run a program and then close the terminal, it's not running anymore because it's right. controlling terminal is gone. Oh. And then grep was filtering all that out. And then with the brackets we've talked about, that emitting the grep itself. Okay. Anyway, so let's get into the actual configuration of proxy chains now that we've totally rat holed. Um, <laughs> if I go into slash Etsy and say use vi to look at proxychains.conf, uh, you'll see that we have a couple of different options here. There are dynamic chains, strict chains, and random chains. And so a dynamic chain right here as it says, if I were to uncomment this and comment out my strict chains, the way that it's going to work is it's going to try the first one in my list. Mm -hmm. And then it's going, to, you know, proc it's going to proxy through the first one, then the second one, then the third one, then the fourth one, right? Okay. If, say, my third one doesn't respond, it's like down my, like, you know. We'll my, skip it? Yeah. It's, okay. If I have a server in Nova Scotia and Nova Scotia is like dark, then oh. no worries. It'll keep going to whatever the next oh, one that's nice. is, right? It won't just like blank out right there. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Whereas a strict one is, is what I prefer, and that is to say that it. Give, it takes the list exactly as I specify, and it doesn't, you know, if, if, one of the, um, if one of the proxies is down, it just doesn't make the connection. And I want to know that because I don't want it to be, you know, uh, I want to not be notified if any of my proxies are down. Well, don't you want it to keep going, though? You, yes. And, and I can see how, like, a lot of people would want the dynamic one if you're mm -hmm. using a lot of public proxies and things yeah. like that. Um, me, in particular, when I'm using my own servers, well, yeah, I need to know if one of my servers is down. Right. And so this is just one, another way to know if I don't uh, have like some okay. sort of so monitoring software. So the other one's software. not even going to give you a notification. It's just going to Yeah, it's just, well, I think it does say like skipping this one. But um, 
And then the last one is random chains. And you can imagine, as it implies, it just randomly chooses the order, which oh, okay. could be fun. I don't know. So I'm going to leave this a strict chain. Uh, there's also the option here, proxy DNS. If uh, you comment this out, your DNS queries will not be done through the proxy. I definitely suggest uncommenting this because you know that's one way to uh, have your information leak. It's like, what good is proxying your data if all of your DNS queries right. are coming out of your like Cox or your Comcast cable yes. subscription, and you know, and then the man knows what you're doing. Um, and so, with those set, you come all the way down to the bottom, and what you'll see is your actual proxy list. And it's real simple. You just add the SOX5, the proxies, and the ports. And in my case, I've already created those to be local, and then we've already set 8,001 mm -hmm. to be avocado, 8,002 to be papaya, and 8,003 to be mango. Mm -hmm. So with all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and quit here. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> I'm in insert mode typing colon Q exclamation point into my file. Wow, OK, so let's, uh, OK, and so now if I were to, um, to take a command, let's and let's do a um, let's do a command that's going to show like our IP address. I always like you know whenever we do proxies for say uh, SOX5 proxy for like you know your web browser, one of the things yeah. I like to do is go to ipchicken.com because <laughs> yes. it's a it's a quick and easy way to see like hey what IP what's my exit node? Yes. Where am I coming out of? So without using the proxy chain, let me uh, go over here and run um, run curl. And then ip.appspot.com. What's curl do? So curl's like wget. It just oh. gets this file. Uh -huh. And so ip.appspot.com is a place where they host a script that reports back your IP address. Okay. And as we can see right here, I just did that, and I got this IP address oh, nice. that ends in 63. Now if I do the same command prefixed by proxy chains, and now do curl ip.appspot.com, what you'll see is the magic happening does the DNS request for ip.appspot. And you can see the chain that it takes oh. is my local one to avocado, avocado's local uh, to SOX5 papaya. to papaya, and papaya's local to, um, to mango. mango. Mm -hmm. And then it checks 4.2.2.2, which is its DNS server, port okay. 43. And then, so it gets the response, and the DNS response is saying, hey, bro, ip.appspot.com is this IP address. So now we re resolved it through our proxy chain. Right. And now we do the same thing again. Uh, you know, avocado, papaya, mango. Mango comes out this IP. This is the actual IP address of mango. Uh -huh. Or I'm sorry, this is the IP address of the, the server website. that it re just resolved. And then it reports back the IP address of mango. And you can see that oh. in st it doesn't end in 63. Yeah, it ends changed. in 73. Cool. And that is our server there. And so now we can set up as many of these as we want. That's awesome. And I could do, you know, um, I could do a wget. I could, I could do proxy chains, Firefox, www.example.com. And this would fire up Firefox, and Firefox would load example.com. And there we go. It's nice. going slowly of course. through those three different proxies. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. You break it down so much yeah. easier. I mean, that actually makes it easy enough for me to understand, which is great. That's the idea. And <laughs> of course, if you guys have questions on any of this, you know, hit up feedback at hack5.org. We're going to be doing some even more fun SSH gymnastics, if you will, with uh, something that's going to make VPNs really easy next week. So stay mm. tuned for that. And of course, feedback at hack5.org. If you want some clarification on anything we glossed over. I now, think uh, I'm going to make some proxy chains, and you want to come back with some Technolust and trivia, maybe? That's what we should After do. The break? All right, be right back. All of your numbers in one place. Say goodbye to messy spreadsheets and disconnected charts. SumAll is a remarkably well designed tool that consolidates all of your business data PayPal, Google Analytics, Shopify, Big Commerce, eBay, and more, allowing users to quickly and painlessly choose practical courses of action regarding their customers' habits. SumAll makes it easy for you to figure out what to do next. Are your new customers or returning customers more profitable? We've been using SumAll for our shop, and we can see how sales compare from last week to the next. 
Are you marketing to the right people at the right time? Sumall empowers you with tools previously only available to big companies to uncover info like this and so much more. Sumall launched recently and is free for all for the time being. Jump in and learn more about your company and its customers at sumall.com.